I just wanted to throw to Steve Koch, who was going to um, talk to us a little bit about groups accessing um, the Deep Herd uh, trials team and the protocols and processes around that. So over to you, Steve, to just chat for that about um, for us for a few minutes. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, Steve Kosh. I'm based here in um, in Geraldton, and I've been with Deep Herd and formerly the Department of Agriculture for 42 years. So I've, I've worked here, and previous to that at Meriden, um, all of that's been as a technical officer, and more recently as manager of field research services in the north. So I look after the um, you know, like Wongan Hills North. So we we've, we've still got a so I've got a team of people at Wongan Hills and also a team here at Geraldton. And uh, at Wongan Hills, we've still got a, uh, a research station that's um, a, a full research station, part of which is leased. But uh, those facilities are available you know, to, to work in with grower groups. We, we try and promote um, or encourage you know, co-location of trials and, and, uh, and the sort with that. Um, in the past, um, we, we, I personally here have uh, worked with uh, NAG and uh, Mullawa uh, a fair bit with uh, the Mingani Irwin group, Levy and West Midlands group. So um, in, in past histories, we've worked with all, all those groups and uh, we just like to um, emphasize that we're available to assist you in, um, in certain ways to help you with, with your uh, projects. Um, that, that assistance can be through, you know, even if you want a, a, a bit of a hand with setting something up or just to run some ideas past us, we try and locate, co-locate a lot of our deep herd trials at your sites, uh, especially um, here we've done it a lot with the Ming and New Irwin group, where any trials that we can co-locate at, at your field day sites, um, we do. Um, it's a double benefit, you know, you, you get the trials at the site and, uh, and we get the exposure. So it's a, it's a two-way street with that. Um, the, the trials that you do, sometimes um, it can be a trial that if you can collaborate with, with a, a deep herd researcher, then often the trial can be done through our internal um, trial work. So, you know, it may be a shared cost or it might, might be no cost. Uh, or you, in some instances, we've done trials for grower groups where we've done the whole service for you. And there are other providers that can do that as well. But uh, you, can, you can contract us to um, implement the trial. You know, or everything from um, site selection to spraying to seeding to harvest and that sort of thing. So it's all negotiable. Um, but, uh, just wanted to emphasise, just feel free to contact them. Um, Julie or myself, um, and also Ian Pritchard is, is our manager who's based in Nash Street. And um, yeah, Ian's got a good understanding of all the, the different groups and um, where you're located. So even if you wanted to talk to him. Um, our, our, uh, our teams uh, have got a range of equipment. They've all got, it's all small plot cedars, but at, at Wongan Hills, we have got air cedars as well. But we've got a range of uh, equipment from um, spaders, you know, small plot cedars, blue sprays, deep rippers. So there, there is a, a, a good range of equipment that you could use. But if we can help in any way, um, feel free to contact uh, Julie, myself or Ian, and um, we can discuss. Pretty much all I wanted to say and uh, just to encourage that um, participation and, and assistance. Excellent. Thanks, Steve. Um, so just to be clear, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, where it is a deep herd and the grower group uh, trial collaborating together, there's no charge for the deep herd services? That would be in negotiation, like if, yep. it, if it, fit, fit it fitted into one of Deep Herd's projects or Deep yes, Herd okay. had, had money for it, yes, yep. that, could, okay. that could happen. If okay. it was a separate trial altogether, one that we didn't have any input into, we could still do, 
we're still available to uh, help implement that trial, but that would be on a, a fee Pay for service. service. Yeah. Yep, got it. We have, a, we have a crop quote system where we can punch in the numbers and you can, you can just ask for a quote on that and some of the guys do that. They'll get a quote off us. And and other other suppliers as well, so that's that's fine. Okay, okay. Thanks for that cl clarification. I just have one other um, inquiry. What about like a phone a friend situation? If a group's you know run into a glitch and they don't quite know how to handle it, um, are you in a position to receive like a phone call from a group um, just as a one off short short sort of response? Not um, you know a complex. Um, troubleshooting situation? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, like in, as I said in the past, we've had a, had a lot to do with the Ming and New Irwin group and um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, phone calls back and forth about trials and yeah. Okay, that's great to know. And so if, it, if a situation escalated and they needed to get you out on site, that may incur a fee for service and you would just erase that at the time and, and work through that. Yeah, it, it may okay. do, but if look, if it's for a bit of advice or they, even if they wanted to have a look at a site that they were intending on using, we've, we've often looked at um, potential trial sites together. Um, just um, a couple of heads is always better than one. Okay, so, yeah, all right. If it's something like that, it's all negotiable. Okay, perfect. So I suppose the, the, the takeaway point there is just get on the phone and see um, how complex it is and, and what's involved and um, you can go for there. And the main contacts are yourself, Julie and Ian Pritchard. Yes. And we'll make those um, contacts available to everyone with a follow-up email. Even, so if you're in, even if you're in the uh, Esperance area, we, we've, got, um, we've got people down there as well. But, but if you contact us, we can put you on to those ones down there if it's, if it's an area outside of you know, Northern Meriden and up here, even if it's down south, Catanning, Esperance, we can put you onto someone that um, you can talk to down there. Excellent. All right, um, well, let's... So this third session is probably the shortest of the sessions. Um, I do run a longer course, which goes into more um, hands-on and practical examples uh, where um, we get people to sit behind the computer as well. Um, some of you may have been or know of that. A um, little bit more tricky in COVID times to get those running, but um, um, yeah, they, they uh, happen from time to time. But I thought I'd just briefly uh, uh, talk about here, analyzing trial results. In this little session, I'll look at one particular example um, here is one with three reps of three treatments. So the three treatments are deep ripping, shallow ripping, and the nil control. And you can see the results there, nine strips um, in a row in the paddock. And may not be immediately obvious, but there is a bit of a trend and an approximately linear trend in yields as you go from left to right, particularly when you take out the effect of treatment. Um, so we will include in our analysis that spatial trend, basic linear spatial trend, um, because that will improve our results, our analysis. Okay, so what is what analysis tool do we use? Generally, we start with, particularly with simple designs, analysis of variance. Um, it's a tool been around for a long time. It's an objective tool for assessing treatment differences. So. We don't want to be at a stage where we just look at the data and, uh, and have to make up our own mind. We want something objective where we come out from it with a probability um, related to the treatments, what we call a p-value. And, and we're aiming often in the scientific world to get that p-value less than 0.05. And although we are flexible, that's not a rigid uh, uh, cutoff. Less than 0.05 means that we are 95% confident that the treatment effects are real. So that gives us the confidence to then extend the message um, broader. So the software options for, uh, well, there's, I've listed three, but really there's only two of these work. Um, the, the main tool we use, um, and I use that very regularly, almost daily, is Genstat, a tool designed in the agricultural um, setting. Um, and so analyzing 
agricultural trials is exactly what it's been set up for many years ago and they've just kept building on it. The one catch is there is an annual license. I'm not familiar with the exact cost because it's not on their webpage. Um, the company is VSN. So, but if you Google Genstat, I'm sure it will come up. Um, you just need to get in contact with them. They do have discounted rates for not-for-profit, but I would guess it's still around about $1,000 for the annual license. Um, that seems to be an issue sometimes for grower groups running tight budgets. Um, but in the scheme of the, the, the cost of trials, your trial program, I think it's still a worthwhile investment. And the alternative, of course, is to get in touch with uh, someone who does have Genstat and either pay them to run the service or um, somehow get it run. There is a free tool, R, and I'll uh, just very briefly demonstrate that. Um, the trouble is it's not as easy to use. Genstat is, um, you know, you, you use your Windows program where you can, you've got menus and you'll see that. Fairly simple to use, while R is more a programming style um, tool. Um, not not overly difficult to learn and pick up, but definitely more ch more challenging than Genstat. Um, Excel has some very basic analysis of variance options, but they really don't even cut it for the type of example. I tried to do the analysis uh, for the example today, and it couldn't do it. So um, Excel is not really um, up to it. So I'll demonstrate in Genstat. Um, and here I've just um, put the analysis of variance output, which we'll generate um, in a moment in Genstat. Um, so what's come out here is first an analysis of variance table, and it's it mentions adjusted for covariate. That's because not only did I um, ask the analysis of variance to look at treatment, but also the covariate, which is our um, spatial trend you know, plot number. So plot is a covariate. Um, now, could someone tell me, can you see my mouse? Yes, okay, good. So yeah, so the, the variant we're measuring is yield, the covariate is plot, and we get a table here, analysis of variance table, a lot of numbers, and for a statistician, I can make a little bit of sense of some of these numbers and they mean something, but really, it's the, the, the last column, which is your p-value. Um, whoops, so I'll go back. Um, so the p-value for treatment is 0 0.070. So getting very close to our 0 0.05 we're often hoping for. Um, so yeah, I would definitely see that and say, yeah, something's going on with treatment. Something, um, you know, we're getting uh, um, results worthwhile that uh, more than just variability. The covariate's also coming out at 0 0.011. So definitely that spatial trend we may have seen in our results is is there and it's particularly strong when we've already put treatment in because um, some of the noise in our results was due to the uh, treatment effect. The table of means here, because we've got the covariate, the table of means are actually adjusted. So treatments which ended up being in a, you know, more to the left or more to the right in our design may, um, may be adjusted up or down accordingly, um, according to the, the, the spatial trend linear fit with the uh, we've put into the data. So that's sensible. Um, if we don't have um, that spatial trend adjustment, then the table of means is just your base will be your simple um, means you could have uh, calculated in Excel yourself. So there's nothing special going on there. What does come out um, and fairly important for our analysis is what we call a least significant difference. So, or LSD. So LSD stands for least significant difference. And the interpretation of that is a little bit in, in the words there. It's, it's how much um, the difference between treatments needs to be at least for um, it to be significant. So you need a difference in this case of at least 0.39 for treatments to be significant at a 5% level or for us to have 95% confidence that these, this difference in treatments is, is real. So if we go to our uh, treatment means, we can see, for example, the deep rip treatment. The difference between deep rip and our control is a difference of about 0.47. Um, um, that is greater than our LSD, and therefore we have uh, a significant effect of deep ripping. Um, however, with shallow rip, the difference here, although it's uh, fairly sizable, 0.23 tonne, um, 
the statistics is telling us that it's less considerably less than the LSD still. So we don't have high confidence that the shallow rip is actually increasing yield. There's a, there's a pretty high chance that it was just variability um, and shallow ripping is not doing anything despite it having a higher, uh, higher yield than the control. So we're inconclusive about shallow ripping. We, we don't know, maybe it had a positive effect, maybe not. While with deep ripping, we have high confidence um, that that is having a positive effect on yield. So we'll go now and generate this same output. I'll open GenStat. And I'll go to the file menu and open my data file. And I'll go back to the desktop, find my file. Um, okay, as long as I've set up the file, the data in this, um, in the sheet right at the top left of the sheet, um, you can just press finish and it'll load it in. If, if not, you can press next and tell it um, what cell range, Excel cell range that uh, the data is in. And I'll press finish. Um, I also set up my data. I thought I'll just open the data sheet so you can see how I set it up. In GenStat, the, uh, the best way to set up your data is to just put it in the top left of the sheet. Um, GenStat does need to know which variables are our group grouping or uh, treatment type variables. And while you can set this in uh, GenStat, the easiest way is to put an exclamation mark um, behind the columns. Um, which GenStat um, considers as, as group columns. So rep is one and treatment is one. We're not actually going to use rep. We could use rep, but it's uh, the analysis is, I think, better if we use a spatial trend, which is plot, um, the plot number rather than the rep. Um, okay, so we have our data loaded in. We go to the stats menu, find an analysis of variance. Um, I always select general. You can get some uh, little bit strange results from doing unbalanced or one and two way. I don't ever use them. So go to general. Um, we could select the design, um, which in this case is one way and over with no blocking because we actually we do have blocking. We could put the blocks in, but um, I'll choose not to. But you can also do it all just in, gen in the general um, analysis of variance. If you went to another one like a split plot design, it'll sort of tailor your screen a little where you can put in the whole plots and the subplots. And but I'll go back to general. So the Y variant is what we're trying to analyze, which is yield. I can double click on the, uh, the available data here. You'll notice that it only will allow you to have non-group variables or um, measurement type data. So just the plot and the yield are the only two columns in our data set. I'll double click on yield, should bring it across here, or I could have typed it in. Treatment structure, well that's treatment, we're interested in um, deep ripping, shallow ripping control, so we, I'll bring that one across to there. The block structure, I could have put in block as rep, um, but it actually works nicer in the analysis if we have a covariate for spatial trend in, as in plot number. So I'm gonna put the uh, plot number as a covariate. Um, in the options, I'm just going to turn on the LSDs because the, um, that's by default, GenStat doesn't have that. Um, turn that on instead of the SEDs and press run. And the output comes in the output screen. And you'll see pretty well the output which we had on the previous um, slide. So this was seen on the previous slide, and you remember, you might remember these p-values. And um, we also had, I didn't include that in the slide, that's just the effect of the covariage. It's a positive, it's saying positive 0.09, which is about 0.1 ton per hectare, per, I mean, per plot. That's what that's saying. Um, and here's our treatments, which we had on the slide, and here's our LSD. One other thing we can do is we can actually get GenStat to do the comparisons between the treatments um, for us and actually give us a p-value for each particular pairwise comparison, um, as well as giving us significance lettering, which I'll explain in a moment. So 
I've got to go back to my analysis of variance, which I could go through the menus or just on the left-hand side here, I double click, find that, that window again. I'm going to go back into the options and there's something called multiple comparisons there. I'll click on that, click on multiple comparisons. Now I could spend a bit of time um, ex explaining why I select the one I do here, but um, basically almost always we I use the Fisher's unprotected LSD. Um, the other options are a lot stricter and in most cases unnecessary to have them um, such a strict test. Um, I'm also going to tick comparisons. That gives us all the pairwise comparisons and the means with the letters. So I'll go OK, OK and run. It'll run the same analysis, um, but this time we're going to get a little bit extra at the bottom. We're going to get a comparison of each pairwise, um, each two treatments will be compared. So control versus shallow rip has an actual p-value and as we noticed before, it's not significant. While control versus deep rip um, is significant. We knew based on the LSD, the significance was less than 0.05, greater than 95% confidence. It's actually a p-value of 0.027 for uh, the effect of deep ripping. And it's put our significance lettering there. Um, and unless you're familiar with that, it takes a little bit to get your head around that. But basically what the significance lettering does is it, it, it's a quick summary of what treatments are significant and which ones aren't. And for treatments to be significant, they need to share no common letters. So the control has an A and the deep ripping has a B. No, no common letters are shared and therefore uh, control was significantly different to deep ripping. While shallow ripping versus deep ripping, for example, they do... Um, share the letter B. So we can't say actually that uh, deep ripping and shallow ripping are significantly different from each other. We don't have that confidence. So I'll go back to my slides. And this is what we did a moment ago in Genstat. And now I'll switch to R. In R, we need to put programming code in. So the code here is on the left-hand side. So you need to install a package, Agricole. So R is a free program. All the packages are free. You can just easily install that. You only need to install it once. To load that package, you use the function library. And we need to set the working directory. That's what this is for. Oh, um, set working, working directory for where the data is. Um, whatever the folder is where the CSV file is. We need to have our data in a CSV file. That's the easiest way to load it in. And you use a function called read.csv. So once we've got to that fourth line, we've now got our data into R. The next line is doing our analysis of variance. So we put it into a model, a term called model, and we run the function AOV. Yield is our Y variance, then we need one of these tilders and then treatment and plot are the two variables we're fitting and we need to tell where the data is the data is in data with a capital d which is what we just set the previous line then we can do summary model and when we run summary model we get this output here on the right and it's basically an aov table and you may remember when we ran genstat we had two p values one was 0 0.070 and that's exactly what this is it just looks a bit different because there's an extra decimal place but it is the same as 0 0.070 and same here the plot p value is 0 0.011 in genstat exactly the same here um and it puts um, stars and dots so it just shows here um even though we used a different tool our versus Jen said the, if it's done correctly, we should get the same answer. And um, there's also a function here, lsd.test. And that's this function is, um, is why we loaded in this library called Agricola, because that's got the, uh, the lsd.test function in it. Um, we do it on the model. We're focused on the treatment effect. Um, and we needed to write console equals true. Um, Okay, and it, it produces a lot of the same output as GenStats. So produces our means here. 
So that's the control main 2.06, the deep ripping 2.53, for example. It also produces our significance lettering. You can see the same A, A, B, and B. I will just show it actually running live in R. Um, see how it's done. So the R file is sort of like a text file, but you need to um, put the text commands into R. And there is a, a program a lot of people use called R Studio, and that's just a way of um, arranging our screen so that we have the text file, a text file with the commands here um, in one section of the screen, the actual R program in the lower section of the screen. And then what I can do is I can run so I've got the package installed already, I think, so I won't run that line, but then I'll run this line by pressing the run button. And you can see it, it, it puts it down in the R program. Then I'll run the next line. And uh, it's giving me a warning message about versions, but uh, that's, I don't think that's affecting anything. Uh, I need to actually tell it the correct directory, okay, where the file is. So um, I'll need to copy and paste that into my, now we have, we're on OneDrive, so we have very um, long directories here. And I've just got to change the forward slashes to, or backslashes to forward slashes, otherwise I won't like that. So I'll run it again. Yes, it accepts it now. I'm gonna read the data in. Um, okay, it's given me warning it can't read example that's CSV. And that's because I've relabeled it um, a name different, two dot example. So I'll change that in my code to give it the right name, run. And now it's read the data in um, there. Then I'll run the model. And again, it's run. We're not seeing anything yet, but when we do summary of model, which is the next one, you can see the output comes out here as per shown on the slides. And the next one again, run that and we get the output. I'll make this window a bit bigger so we can see it all. And you can see the information provided there. So I'll close and save and go back to my slides. Just want to touch on an aspect uh, from my previous um, uh, session, which are on design. We could think if we only had rep one in this trial, so we ran a demo rather than a trial, you can see the how easy it is to run wrong conclusions. Because rep one would have, if we ignore the other reps, we would say deep ripping reduced yield by 0.1 of a ton shallow ripping increased it, um, and we might come with the wrong conclusions. So that's this shows the importance of uh, replication because with only one rep, you can get one soft results, but when you have more um, reps, you gain confidence um, what really is happening. So analysis support, um, recommend you get maximum value by using a biometrician. Um, so you're welcome to contact me, similar to what Steve mentioned, if there's, you know, if this is work and done in collaboration with DPIRD, we will assist. Um, if it's just your own grow group work, there may, we may need to negotiate a, uh, um, a fee. It's also the uh, statistics for the Australian Grains Industry Group in uh, at Curtin. Um, so if your work is GLEC related, um, you could go there as well. And that's the end of this session. So welcome any questions you may have. So um, we'll just throw it open to the floor, um, see if anyone's got any questions. I'm also curious to know how many groups have GenStat, wasn't it, the software? Yes. So how, many, how many groups are using that? So um, yeah, you could chime in if you use GenStat and uh, let us know how you find it. We'd like to, but don't due to subscription fee. Ah, Veronica. So Veronica says she'd like their group would like it, but um, 
don't due to subscription fee. And Andrew, you were saying that was is around a thousand dollars a year, was it? That's my guess, but I don't know until you need to contact the uh, the company for. Yeah. Um, it, it could be a bit more, maybe yeah. a bit less. So, Veronica, I'm curious, what what do Cfig use? Ah, uh, okay, yeah. And then Dan Stillings to Coast. Just just unmute yourself, everyone, and chime in. Dan says been using JMP Pro. What does JMP stand for, Dan? Uh, I think it's the jump, but I don't think that has any. It's by SAS. It's, um, it's just a stats program that has a visualization aspect to it. And I just use that one because I used it in my thesis and it converts nicely to R. Uh, right, and um, Kelly's Kelly from Facey Group says she's used it a lot, but the license has lapsed. I contacted them recently, and it's fifteen hundred dollars annually. So, yeah, um, Monica or Julie Hodge. Tell us about Julie Hodge, Veronica. Um, we used to just contract her to do the stats for us before she retired. So now we'll have to find an alternate option yeah because i found personally she was so quick at it it was her efficiency was actually saving us money in the time it would take me to do the same job so yeah, yeah and I she used to do a lot of mvts and all that yeah. sort of stuff was julie a a deep head or an external consultant uh external consult yeah. consultant these days but yeah she's about to retire so Kelly hmm. from Facey is saying SAS is another that she's used and Python. Gosh, sounds like there's a lot of options. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do we have any more questions from the, from the room? Oh, Jody's from NACRA up in Kununurra. So that's kind of um, a different, different mixture of trials that, um, and agriculture that we wouldn't be used to down here. What, what are your... Comments on it. Yes, yeah, so we often just um, get the stats done by like universities and stuff that uh, we work with. Um, but my boss does use ARM or ARM, um, but I personally haven't used it myself, so I can't say much for the usability of that. Jodie, what um, trials are NACRA looking at this year? Uh, we still haven't put our program together. Um, but I dare say there'll be a lot to do with maize, cotton, um, sorghum, chickpeas. Um, so very different, I assume, to what you guys are doing down there. And do you have any involvement with deep herd officers in the northwest? Yeah, we um, in the past have worked quite closely with deep herd and at the moment trying to put some uh, trials together for coming years. Um, Andrew, Veronica's popped a question into the chat for you saying, Andrew, what would be the best software if cost isn't an issue? So if you had didn't have any budget constraints, what would be your pick? Yeah, definitely Genstat. I mean, that was built from an agricultural um, background, very simple to use. It's um, It's got exactly what, what you want. Um, yeah, it, it can be done the same in R and possibly, probably in SAS and, and other programs. But yeah, I would recommend GenStat. So the key points from Andrew's talk is the analysis of variance and the p-value is the, the critical um, statistic to, to be looking at because it gives you an indication of um, the 95% confidence rate. Um, you've got a range of software options as we've actually already discussed. There's a lot more out there than um, uh, just the ones that Andrew has been talking about. But GenStat, I think um, in, he indicated was probably one of the best tools, but there is a fee. Um, uh, Kelly emphasised that it's $1,500 now. Um, the R tool, which is free, but is a little bit more complicated in as it uses code. Um, and Excel is not really the best tool, but it's available. Um, in terms of um, GenStat, 
we looked at um, the LSD levels, um, the 5% and how much of a difference between treatments. So an LSD of say 0.3, you then look at the um, treatment levels and um, you can then run a comparison as well, which then gives you an idea as to whether the values, um, so say if your control is 2.0, your deep rip is 2.5, and your shallow rip is 2.3. Um, it looks at the, the confidence level to say that um, it's highly confident that the deep ripping over the control is um, valid, whereas the shallow ripping wasn't as it was a lower, um, a lower value and wasn't as significant between the two um, results. So the R program, while it is free, it's around installing code. Um, Andrew did run through a demonstration. Um, it would be probably quite good to get hold of the the, the run the run pro the program itself. That statement selection of statements, and then you run you run it through step by step, inserting your document, your spreadsheet details into it. It then runs it, and it comes out with as we've seen the same or typically the same ans answers to. Um, a decimal degree um, as GenSat. So I think that's a good summary, <laughs> considering it's all statistics. So Yeah, thank you, Alison. I'm glad you did that wrap up and not me. Um, my statistic days were a long time ago, also my trial days.